Hey everyone, this is Derek Hansen for RunningMechanics.com. And what I want to go over is something that I cover a lot in our courses at Running Mechanics Professional. And the whole idea, and this may be very straightforward for some people, but this idea that we're going to have a front side mechanic and a back side mechanic, and how do we work on that during different phases of the run, whether it's acceleration, whether it's upright sprinting, whether it's just jogging. I like to point out what my interpretation of front side and back side is, because there's obviously different ones. And a lot of the time in our field, it gets very convoluted over communication and terminology. So I just want to make sure you know where I'm coming from when you attend one of my courses and we go over this concept. In the first case, when we do something like a drill and we're looking at all of the movement in the sagittal plane, usually you want to see somebody from the side when you're examining their running. You can look from different angles, but certainly the best bang for your buck is a lot of the time going to be from the side. So we observe sagittal plane about a frontal axis. And what we're looking at is, you know, you'll see it called ventral and dorsal, but really that is front side and back side. So I'm always looking at it in terms of this frontal plane axis. Are things moving front side in terms of how the body lines up and extends? So when you're running upright or you're doing a drill upright, this is the front side of the body. This is the back side. Now in acceleration, I use the same concept in terms of this is the frontal axis working in the sagittal plane. And even though some people may interpret this pushing out the back here as backside, I don't. This is pushing in line with the body just like you would in this drill up and down vertical so I always even say when people are accelerating I say up and down up and down up and down because it is in line with that axis there even when we get to hip extension it's not hyper extension then if somebody was hyper extending an acceleration then I would say they were getting backside and that was excessive and that was not productive so even in acceleration I want them to line up get hip extension not hyper extension and I want them to load up front side and get down so even my interpretation of front side is very applicable in acceleration. You want to get the thigh up, you're preparing the foot for force production on the ground, then you get off the ground as quickly as possible. And in some of the graphs I show, in acceleration, a lot of the time the first push is about three, four tenths of a second off the block, off the start, and then you're into below two tenths of a second and the lower one tenths of a second once you even get into three or four strides. So it's not a long time. It shouldn't feel like a push. It should feel like quick, rapid, elastic steps, even in acceleration. So when we get to maximum velocity mechanics and we're getting the knee up, again, I'm still looking about the frontal axis and we're predominantly more front side. Now there is going to be some, in some cases, particularly later in the race and you're going towards the finish line in the 100 meters, you will see people extend backside a little more just because one, they're fatiguing, two, they're reaching for the line, they're pushing a little more. Even when you see somebody decelerate, you'll see that backside pushing, right? But in a very elite level sprinter, a lot of the time you'll still see them in this line here. The extension of the hip will just be to the frontal axis, frontal plane here. And then what happens is you'll see the lower leg gets backside, recoils, and recovers for the next stride. But again, we still want a front side dominant position for the thigh and the front leg there. And again, we're getting height over the ground upon which we can create downward force and run faster. So that's my easy interpretation of front side versus backside. We cover this a lot in the course. I don't want people to be confused by it. I don't want to get into arguments about it. This is how I interpret it. So when I'm coaching, everybody understands that's what I'm talking about. When I say front side of the arms, this is the back side of the arms, right? We're going to have a more front side dominant action in sprinting. And I would even say in an acceleration and of course in upright drills. So that's my interpretation of front side versus back side. For more information, visit runningmechanics.com and hopefully we can see you at a running mechanics professional event and course very soon.